Here are the top five qualities that make a successful real estate agent. Stay tuned to know if you got it. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all having an incredible day. If you don't know, my name is Aaron. I'm a real estate agent here in the Chicagoland area, and I make content based on being a real estate agent, being a real estate investor, and in business in general on this channel. So if those things interest you and you're not yet subscribed, please do me the greatest honor, subscribe to the channel to get more videos like this in the coming future. We have a lot of exciting stuff coming your way. The flip, my first flip is done. We got real figures coming on that. We got a brand new team I just started. We got training coming on that. And then just business, real estate, whole bunch of stuff coming your way. So subscribe and stay tuned. In the meantime, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And of course, leave a comment with your thoughts, feedbacks, questions, concerns, insults, compliments. I'll take it all. Anything we can do for the algorithm. <laughs> that being said, let's get right into business. The top five qualities that make a successful real estate agent. And one thing I want you to know. Nowhere in these top five qualities do I mention that you need to know anything about homes, okay? Any materials I don't mention, location, it doesn't matter, okay? I really want you guys to grasp the simplicity of what I'm about to share with you all and understand that we as brand new agents are the ones complicating the work, right? The career, the industry itself is not that difficult. It's not that complicated, not difficult. It's not that complicated, right? If you have these five traits, I'm about to share with you. If you don't, if you start working on them, you will find yourself naturally becoming a successful real estate agent. You won't be able to help yourself, okay? Now, they are going to be simple, but do not let that go over your head, okay? Number one, this is, <laughs> I'm honestly, you need this skill to be successful in anything you do, even if you have a job. You absolutely have to be a great communicator. And let me explain what I mean. Uh, what a great communicator is not someone who says it likes to be a great presenter, okay? A great com a communicator is someone who's able to listen to a conversation, identify the pain points, and see how we can ro resolve it. Take a client from very angry to calm, okay? Take a client who's emotionally a mess and get them to see logic in a moment where they all they can feel is anger and hate and what da 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 right? That's what being a great communicator is. Also, basically making sure that your clients are fully aware of what's going on, you're explaining things properly, like you're staying in touch with them, this, that, and the other, that, that you are able to get your points across, your messages across, and things of that nature. That's what makes a great communicator. And if you have that skill, you will succeed. Honestly, if you just have that skill, you will be successful, right? The other four are like uh, a cherry on top. So, And if you are a bad communicator, understand we all are at some point in our lives. I was a horrible communicator when I was like 16, 17, 18, right? But once I got into the real world, I started, you know, selling cars and selling real estate. I, you know, I started, you know, working down muscle and eventually building up to being a decent communicator. So if you feel like you're an introvert, you're just not that good at talking to people, you're not that good at sales, persuasion, just, you know, or just knowing what to say at the right time or how to identify certain things, don't worry. It will come with time as long as you are self-aware enough to, to note it and then get to working on it. So that's the first skill that makes uh, for, a, for a successful real estate agent. Number two, this is like two things in one. You have, to have a, you have to be very creative and creative in a way that you solve your problems, okay? So because you're gonna be in business for yourself, you're gonna have a bunch of problems that you need creative solutions for. You can't just be one track minded, okay? For example, I can only give you for what I have. Like when the deal is falling through or the lender tells you, ah, you know what, we can't get this accepted unless this happens. You have to have the ability to like, okay, but what if this was to happen over here, which would remove this thing happening at all? The lender would be like, oh, I didn't think about that. That's happened to me more times than you could possibly imagine, right? For example, we have this deal that won't basically close because the seller is refusing to get us an invoice from his electrician. Right, and his electrician wants to keep it on the table, so he doesn't want to give us an invoice. So I said, you know what? Let me see how much this per thing is going to cost. Yeah, the seller literally sent us how much they quoted him, not an official invoice. It was like sixteen grand and some change, right? I called some of my contractors, and I'm like, can we do this for twelve? Yes. So I prepared an email saying, look, you've already put the deposit. However, I could get this job done for twelve. You've paid two thousand, right? Already. So I understand you want to work with the same guy, so you don't lose your investment. 
However, if we go with the second quote, number one, it's actually cheaper in the long run, right? It's 14,000 total instead of $16,000 total. Everybody wins, right? And we could close, you can get paid, yada, 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 yada. Now we're still working that deal through, but that's a creative way to come uh, to solve a problem. And also in your business, you also have to be very creative in, in a sense of like, okay, everyone's doing this, how can I be different, okay? How can I put my spice on things? You just have to have that attitude because when you are creative, it allows you to venture out and try new things and be in like, a, if you have read the book, The Blue Ocean Strategy, it allows for those opportunities to present themselves to you. For example, TikTok, who has, that has helped me with my following tremendously, right? Across all platforms and my business because I get a lot of leads uh, organically through TikTok. How did that happen? I have a creative mind. And then I saw on TikTok, oh my God, this is a lot of fun. Let me see if I can be creative and solve some, you know, real estate problems people have or just my own real estate problem of how do I get a following on my Instagram, right? Bada boom, bada bing, 35,000 uh, follower, 35, followers later, we're sitting pretty, right? I just I had a video go viral yesterday uh, where 110,000 views. So I'm a very happy camper. So you have to be creative in both your business and in solving problems. Number three, this is more of a mistake a lot of real estate agents make, but it's also a quality of an individual, right? You have to be a long-term thinker. You can't be short-sighted. This business is, is, is an industry where everything you do is, is very difficult, you know, like the cold calling strenuous, the making the videos take time, the door knocking, the open house, all this is a lot of effort, and you're not gonna get paid for that effort up front, and it can feel real quickly that, you know what, you're wasting your time. It takes somebody that's a, it's got a long-term thinking mindset, right, to say, you know what, yeah, I just talked to 100 people this month that aren't really ready to make a move, but if I just keep talking to 100 people every month, that'll be 1,000 people or 1,200 people in a year. I guarantee at least 10 people will want to do something with me, right? You have to have that long-term mindset or when you're making content. Listen, when I made my first YouTube video, it had like two views, all right? But I said, you know, if I keep making, I keep making, I will be getting better. And the better I get, the more I can keep your attention, the more I will learn, the better equipment I will get, and eventually the following will grow. Long-term thinking. You have to have that because, especially in your business, if you have putting together a business plan that is solely based on what you could do in the next three to six months, uh, you're going to lose, right? Because business is a long-term game. For example, a lot can happen. A pandemic can hit you, and then that's going to hinder your business, right? So how do you plan for the next five years so five years from now you are having the same growth you are having today? You have to be a long-term thinker. Huge quality of a successful real estate agent or anyone in business, to be honest. Number four, beautiful segue, you have to be business-minded. What does that mean? You have to understand, number one, how to run a business what a business needs, and then basically how to, number one, both operate inside your business and then go outside and basically understand what your business needs and fill that need, right? You have to have that mindset. Or really networking is being a business-minded person. Understanding, okay, if I'm going to give all this value to these da-da-da-da-da because I can get this value back, ba 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 right? So that's being business-minded. Or if you're doing something, for, let's say I'll give you a great example, my flip right? Yeah, of course, I'm going to make some money when I flip it, but that's short-sighted, right? I'm a long-term thinker. I like to have multiple benefits to when I do things, right? Knowing that I'm a real estate agent and I recently have a team. So here's what we're going to do. Since it's my house, I can now market that home any way I want. I can use that home as a leverage point for my business as a real estate agent. So we're going to be door knocking the neighborhood, having an exclusive open house before I let a single buyer in it because I can do that for my own home right? That's just being a, having a business mindset for, okay, what do I need? How do I get traffic? And all that stuff comes from understanding how business works. Very important. And if you don't have this mindset, that's okay. This is something that develops. Again, this is something that developed for me as well. And I really recommend the YouTube channel Valuetainment if you're interested. It's one of the only channels on YouTube that is based on making entrepreneurship content with nothing to sell you, right? Because the guy already has millions of dollars, so he's good to go. So I definitely recommend it. And finally, this is the glue. You know, this is the adhesive that puts it all together. If you don't have this fifth ingredient right here, right, you will not, you, you may have, you know, hit lighting in a bottle, you may be successful for a year or two, but if you want longevity, if you want continued growth, if you want to be making money hand over fist, okay, 
You need this fifth quality to become a successful real estate agent. Discipline. I know. Pretty obvious, right? But it shocks me how 90% of real estate agents I meet have absolutely no discipline. Okay, what do I mean by discipline? Setting a schedule and sticking to it, all right? Letting, telling somebody I will follow with you next week and actually following up with them next week. If you're making content, making content on a weekly basis or making sure that you're at least filming something every day. If you're prospecting, you're disciplined enough to keep hold yourself accountable and prospect every day, right? Just basically being disciplined means being willing to do the work in a consistent, uh, in a, on a consistent basis. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what leads to longevity and long-term success and a whole lot of wealth. And here's another take on why discipline is so valuable. As a real estate agent, you have so many people trying to sell you something, right? I've got the course that's gonna solve your problem. You're sick of calling, I'll show you how to get leads online. You're sick of leads online, I'll show you how to get <laughs> listings by calling for sale bounders. You're sick of that, I'll show you how to get organic business. You're sick of that, I'll show you how to do open house. Yeah, and everyone wants to sell you something, right? It takes a lot of discipline to be like, you know what, this is what's going to be working for me. I'm not going to venture off. I'm not going to try to do 17 things at the same time. Boom. I'm keeping my focus on this one thing and I'm going to remain disciplined until it works out because you're a long-term thinker. You have a business mindset, right? Which means you've already thought it through and you, what, you, what you put together is going to work, right? So you got the business mindset. You're a long-term thinker. You're a great communicator so you can execute where everything you have planned and you're very creative and you could get these pro any problem that comes up, you can resolve it. So you see how I just put it all together? And ladies and gentlemen, those are the qualities of a highly successful real estate agent. But you can apply to anything in business. So I hope this was helpful. This was very surface level, but oftentimes we li like to go a little bit too deep and we overlook the simple things. Simple, five things. Work on these skills right here. Keep, you know, keep sharpening your axe or whatever they say. And before you know it, you give it two years, three years, you'll be a master and you'll be very successful. Thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. And this is the end of my TED Talk. <laughs>